Hey internet and welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I'm a senior at NYU studying computer science and linguistics. I'm graduating a little early this coming December. And in order to do that, to balance the coursework for that, as well as all of the projects that I happen to do on the side, many of which you can find on this channel, I have to find a way to efficiently keep track of everything. And one of the things that helps me do that is an application called Todoist. Chances are, if you found this video, you know what Todoist is, so I won't explain explain the core foundations of Todoist all that much. I started using it several years ago, but then paused and came back to it in the summer of 2019, and I have used it quite literally daily ever since. Relatively recently, they took one of the previously pro features, filters and labels, and have made it available to the free plan, and that's what I'm talking about today. I'm going to go through the filters and label features of Todoist in kind of an overview sense, so a little crash course of sorts. And then at the end, I'm going to go through some potential systems that might work for you. Fairly recently, they released filters and labels to their free plan, something that was only available to the paid plans of Todoist, so today's video is pretty much a crash course in that. Toward the end, I'll go over some ideas of potential systems for you to implement labels and filters, because when I first got the pro plan, I had to like force myself to use this new feature that I wasn't really used to using, but after I did that, it helped a lot of things down the line. So at the end of the video, I'll go through some systems that I've tried out. Maybe they haven't worked for me, maybe they have, but hopefully one of them might work for you, or at least it's worth it to give it a shot. So definitely stay tuned, but if you want to skip to any part of the video in particular, make sure to check the timestamps in the video bar and in the description down below. And don't forget to drop a comment if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. One last thing before we get into it, uh, this is my to-do list. It is blue. That is one difference you might see. And speaking of differences, just keep in mind that I have the Todoist Pro plan, and if you have the free plan, this filter and label stuff will apply to you, but there are some things that might not. I use this software daily, so the $36 a year is almost nothing to me, especially when you compare it to other software. Some people might not need more projects or more filter views and stuff like that, so you know, there's no harm in having a free plan and not the Pro plan. So that being said, with all these projects that I have on the left here, and all these labels that I have and filter views, you might not be able to add this many or things like that, but for the free plan, this basic concept, the basic ideas presented in this little crash course will work for you. You can check this comparison chart right here from Todoist's website, which will be in the description if you want more details on what the differences are. But without further ado, let's jump straight into our crash course. So what are labels and filters? Well, really quickly, labels are quite literally things you can just label tasks with. Here I have this thing called plan out semester projects. I'm changing up my schedule soon. So if I go ahead and go to edit task, click on the little label icon, I can simply just tag it with work, projects, two minute task dailies, so on and so forth. Filters are also somewhat self-explanatory, but to quickly define them, you can take tasks and sort them based on very specific things, whether it be task name or project project name. It could be as simple as items within project A and project B, or all items with a certain tag slash label. All in all, filters show you a subset of tasks, depending on what you want to see. Looking at this work label here, everything that's tagged with work for the upcoming semester will be tagged with this work tag, whereas projects will have their own little tag. For example, this week's assignment is another filter that we'll go over in just a minute, but it shows all of the school assignments, which are in the academics project here on the left. So let's create a label real quick. Let's go ahead and make a new task. So I use emojis whenever I make a task. Uh, let's go ahead and do a briefcase. For Windows, it's holding down the Windows key and then hitting period. This is the shortcut for Mac. I don't know it off the top of my head. We're gonna go ahead and put a pound sign to symbolize what project it might be in. And then if we wanna go ahead and tag it, we hit the at key. So just like a project is a hashtag, the labels are the at key and I can tag it with whatever I want and we'll go with work. Et voila. What if I've just made the work label though? Well, let's go ahead and go over to academics and let's say I wanna mark all of this stuff as work. If I hold down the control button and start clicking, you can see that I select multiple tasks at once. Woo! So going to the top here, you can go ahead and hit labels. And when you click this and then hit apply, it will apply the labels to all the tasks that you have selected. That's literally it for labels. So going into filters, filters makes use of namely project names and labels. If I wanna find anything with a work label on it, for example, I can go ahead into filters, hit add. We'll go ahead and just name it work things. Um, perhaps I have work things in academics and I have work tasks under lifestyle videos. So all we have to do is we put in the work tag in the filter query. Um, and you can choose your own color. Let's do teal for now. Hit add. 
and boom, we have everything that is marked with work on screen. Now, I used to have a label for academic stuff. Anything within any of my class sub projects or related to NYU down here, I would label with at academics. Now, I haven't put my two classes in here yet. I usually have four classes, but I'm part time for my last term. Anyway, I would say, OK, show me all of the assignments that I have this week. And to get some assignment, it would simply be at academics. But there's an easier way to do this. On Todoist, as we can see here, we have academics and then two sub projects. Let's go ahead and create a new project. So add project below. Um, we'll give it a book, Graduate Semantics 1, which is one of my classes this semester. For some reason, I associate linguistics with blue. I'm really liking the teal for some reason. Uh, and I'll go ahead and hit add. Go ahead and add a little paper emoji and we'll say, you know, upcoming essay uh, due September 10th. Now, if I go ahead down to the filters, if I go ahead and say all assignments, originally I would have had to say at academics. And the problem with this is that I would have to tag each homework assignment individually, but with the magic of filters, if you do a double pound sign, so I have to do backpack academics, um, that will take this project academics and everything that is a sub project of it. So we can see everything in academics here. We have my internship, we have tutoring, which is also under academics, and we have our upcoming essay task from graduate semantics. Now I'll delete this because I have a this week's assignment filter and let's go ahead and just take a look at that. And this is at academics and seven days. So we have a filter that is targeting all the projects within academics, including academics and everything within seven days. So it takes that previous filter we just made, but then it says, okay, here's all the stuff happening within the next seven days. This is one of my favorite ways to use filters because you can look at all of your upcoming tasks for just about everything. If it loads, there we go. But if you want to narrow it down, you know, I'm working on school work for the next two hours. What do I have coming up? Working on seashell right now, what game tasks and art tasks do I have coming up? Obviously filters are a bit more complicated and they can get more complicated with this kind of thing. And one of these is with filter logic. So I make videos as you can tell, seeing as you're watching one of them right now. Thank you. Don't forget to leave a comment down below on what you think so far. And if I go to this scheduled video tasks, I'm going to go ahead and hit edit filter. And this is kind of a complex filter, so let's break it down for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this information and hit Q to add a new task. I'm not gonna do anything with it. One thing I don't like is that when you try to make a new filter query, it doesn't highlight it for you like it does in the task. So if I say uh, pound sign lifestyle, it automatically suggests lifestyle. It doesn't do this in the default filter query, which is a little unfortunate. So what you can do is you can test your queries in adding a task. So let's go ahead and paste in what I have here. For more on this filter logic, because you can get really in depth with it, I'll leave a link to Todoist's official like how to in the description down below. But if you're a programmer, a lot of it's the same. We have pound sign lifestyle. So take anything in lifestyle. And then we have pound sign Catano Arcade, which is another thing that I do that involves videos. And this little vertical bar means or. So anything within lifestyle NYU, or anything within Catano Arcade. If I go ahead and change this vertical bar to an and sign, nothing is going to show up because there's no possible way for a task to be in two projects at once. So that's or. Now these parentheses here simply enforce order of operations. If you're familiar with that from grade school and fun stuff, parentheses always come first. So it'll evaluate everything within the parentheses here, everything within the parentheses here, and then everything together. These parentheses say everything within either of these projects. Uh, if I went ahead and added or, put in a backpack, uh, academics, actually put in a second, whoops, pound sign here. Then it would take everything in lifestyle, everything in Catano, everything in academics and all of academic sub projects because of the double pound sign. Then the and sign says, okay, take all of this and also apply no date negated. No date simply says show things without a date. For example, now I do want to show this one because it's a little weird to explain. No date test. Let's go ahead and if I say no date on the filter query, we go ahead and add it. I realize that I'm probably gonna crash to do is doing this because there are a lot of tasks without dates. Yeah, I'm gonna blur all this just in case I have something with an email on here. Um, <laughs> whoops. Now the important thing is we can see no dates here. So if I go ahead and go to edit filter, because no date is two words, I wanna put parentheses around it. And then I'm gonna put an exclamation mark to say the opposite of this. So let's go hit save and ooh, voila. Okay, if I need to blur anything, I will. But now we see all the tasks that show up have dates on them. So pretty much this scheduled video tasks filter that I have here is saying, okay, this is pretty much all the upcoming video tasks that I have because they have a date to them or really long-term things. I'd love to hit 100K by June 6, 2022, but 
shoot high, right? So looking at Todoist's chart here real quick, and again, you can go ahead and look in the description down below for this link, but you can do a lot of stuff with this. And it's this logic, this very specific logic that lets you be as creative as you'd like. You can do multiple labels, but only in certain projects. For example, if I had work in lifestyle NYU, food for philosophical thought and work in academics, I could say all work tags and not in academics. It does take a little tweaking with these things. Uh, and when you get a filter wrong, Todoist will tell you like, hey, we don't recognize that. So make sure your project names are right and you have the right order of things. And worst case, test it uh, when with just making a task to see what autofills and what doesn't because sometimes dates can be finicky. So yeah, that is the end of the label and then filter crash course. Again, filters can get super complicated, but really quickly, I wanted to dive into some potential systems that I have tried before, am still using and want to try in this upcoming term. I do want to mention that as with any system, these things might work for me and they might work for you, but they might not work for you and might work for me. Or maybe it'll work for you and it didn't work for me. You have to try your own stuff, right? And so these ideas are for you to do just that. Give these things a shot, try it for a week, and if it helps, don't use it. If it does help, take what does work and then, you know, work with that. It took me, I would say, about 13 or 14 months to iterate a system over and over again to get something that I have used for the past seven or eight months now without changing anything. And that involves Trello, Google Calendar, and Todoist. I tried Notion, I tried all this fun stuff, but anyway, I, I digress. On a very simple level, with the upcoming term, I have scheduled in these multifaceted deep work blocks. So from 10.30 to 12.30, for example, I have a deep work block and I simply look at Todoist and pick something from there that I have to do. For the ter upcoming term, I want to sort of split these deep work blocks into development blocks and language learning blocks. Uh, too much choice can be an issue. So what I have here is dev work blocks. In other words, whenever I sit down to do development work, I just have anything with a development tag. And then if I do lang work blocks, anything with a language tag or label, sorry. Looking at the filter, it's simply get everything that is within work blocks, that's what WP is for, and has languages applied to it, and I want to do today. The idea is that you can simply say, okay, there are nine tasks here, just look at what's relevant, right? Clear the screen and make it look like you only have one task to do for the next hour. Now, I haven't tried this one, but if you've been curious about what these AP labels are for here, this AP stands for Agile Poker. So a one is something that won't take any work at all, and a hundred is something that will take a boatload of work. A whole video for me might might be a 20. Writing the script might be an 8. Editing might be a 13. Simply based on time, whatever. In other words, it's simply a different way to prioritize these things. This AP tag is simply a way for me to broaden this priority tagging system that Todoist has because these three flags, technically four, are fantastic, but I found that I use them both for things I urgently need to get done and to estimate the time for a task. So now I can say, okay, these are all tasks I need to get done today, literally. Uh, and recording is an AP5. Editing it all at the start will be an AP8. Finished editing requires a bit more work. So, you know, it's worth the bump up to 13. Maybe it's not, this is not agile poker how to. And it's simply another way to look at the priority of certain tasks. This whole video on the other hand might be at AP. 20. Now this math probably doesn't add up. This is just a quick overview of this little system. If you don't want to use agile poker, make yourself, you know, 10 priority flags or make them fun. And lastly, a system that I've just started to use, as we can see with schedule video tasks, is this negated uh, filter query. Now I think this has a lot of potential use because A, you might be able to catch things you haven't labeled or you haven't put in a project that can easily be found somewhere, but B, you can work with negative labels, so to speak. So for example, within this content creation project here, I have videos, videos, podcasts, which I haven't started yet. Uh, ooh, I said yet. So if I wanted to say, okay, tag everything in here with videos, regardless of the fact I could just say not these projects, it could show me everything within content creation, but it would then restrict itself to this podcast thing and streaming. And lastly, uh, a label for things you might totally forget about. But you could make a label for a lot of various things, perhaps something that's so far out in the future that you don't have a date for yet, but uh, you can have a little label here that says, here's all the stuff that I have not planned in and might forget about. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching and stopping by. Do let me know what you got out of today's video in the comments below. If you have a system of your own, I'd love to hear about it. I'm always open to new ideas. And if there's anything specific you'd like to see about Todoist, 
I like to think I have a very intimate knowledge of this program and potentially even integration that go along with it. Let me know down below. If you want some more Todoist content, you've got some uh, some stuff right here. The top one is actually my last Todoist video. But anyway, all that aside, thanks yet again for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome.